I would like to buy a hamburger. I would like to buy a hamburger. I would like to buy a hamburger. The word sandwich can mean a lot of things, but most of the time it means something delicious. Other times it means nothing but trouble. So here are more of the top 10 worst fast food sandwiches in America. Part 2. Their meatball parm is their worst sandwich. Sonic Cheeseburger Toaster. Toaster. <laughs> Sonic Drive-In is the perfect place to go when you're in the mood for unique and delicious sandwiches served in a nostalgic setting. Makes me feel all nostalgic. It's also the perfect place to go if you want to bust your calories, sodium, and fat intake for the next few days. Obviously, Sonic is a fast food joint, so it never claimed to be a health guru, but the cheeseburger toaster breaks new records. The Greasy Beast features a hamburger patty, bacon, lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, onions, an onion ring, cheese, and a hickory barbecue sauce, all in between two slices of Texas toast. <gasps> I smell burning toast! While technically this might seem like a normal fast food offering and the toppings aren't necessarily worse than what you'd find on a regular burger, it's the toast that sets the whole thing off and bumps up the calories. Oh right, because calories. In this case, a standard burger bun would be a much better option, and that goes for basically all the toasters from Sonic. Plus, it would be one thing if the Texas toast were actually worth it, but according to many reviewers online, that's not always the case. Instead of being crispy and crunchy, people have noted that it's usually disappointingly soft and mushy. This burg witch might sound good on paper, but in reality, it's one of the worst inventions ever. The worst. Really the worst. Burger King Chicken Sandwich. Mm. Tastes like chicken. Chicken sandwiches have been gaining a lot of popularity over the years, and fast food restaurants have all tried their best to come up with the next fan favorite. Burger King is no exception, and earlier this year it brought the heat with its new crispy chicken sandwich. The expectations were high, and so were customers' appetites, who couldn't wait to get their hands on the novelty. The only problem is, it's not everyone who was impressed. The supposedly crispy on the outside and juicy on the inside sandwich features a hand-breaded chicken filet, pickles, and a signature sauce, and is served on a potato bun. The potato still tastes like the potato. You can also get the spicier version that comes with a spicy glaze, or opt for the deluxe version with lettuce and tomato. In terms of toppings, this sandwich feels like it would be a huge success and a breakthrough for the chain. After all, the chicken is hand-breaded right there in the kitchen. But in terms of taste, BK could have gone even further. The signature sauce is apparently nothing more than a bland mayonnaise that doesn't have any real flavor, at least according to some unsatisfied customers. I feel so unsatisfied. Plus, clocking in at 800 calories and 710 milligrams of sodium, it feels a little over the top. When compared to other amazing fried chicken sandwiches on the market, the chicken sandwich from Burger King simply doesn't feel like it measures up. Listen, lower your expectations. Arby's Roast Turkey Ranch and Bacon. Arby's has been able to stay afloat all of these years, mostly because it was able to stand out from the burgers and fries crowd. Its roast beef sandwiches bring a breath of fresh air to the fast food world. Fresh air would be nice, wouldn't it? But we're not talking about the roast beef right now. We're talking about the roast turkey ranch and bacon sandwich. At first glance, this item doesn't look too bad. Turkey is considered a healthy protein and is much leaner than red meat. So why is this one of the worst sandwiches in America? Well, Arby's did a great job taking this classic healthy dish and turning it into a horror movie. The sandwich is overly stuffed with turkey, cheddar cheese, thick cut pepper bacon, a salty peppercorn ranch sauce, and some veggies. But at this point, the veggies kind of get lost in there. It's, it's no use. I've lost the whole thing is served on honey wheat bread, which, while it's delicious, only adds to the madness. Not only does this make it one of the most highly caloric options on the menu, but it also has more sodium than the average person should have in a day. It packs a solid 800 calories and 2,400 milligrams of sodium, while the American Heart Association recommends adults to consume no more than 2,300. Even though it might be a nice change of pace from your usual fast food, order, the roast turkey ranch and bacon is a not your best option.
Well, oh, another option. Yeah, another option. option. McDonald's Hula Burger. What are you doing? The Lua. Oh, yeah. Is that right? It's called the Hula. The Hula Burger was invented in the 1960s by none other than Ray Kroc, the man who made McDonald's a household name. And let's just say it wasn't the biggest of hits. It was introduced for one day only alongside the famous filet of fish as a way to test vegetarian options to keep Catholic customers coming in during Lent. Smith's, good Lent to you. Lent is a period where only vegetarian or pescatarian meals are eaten, meaning the sales in certain locations would drop because of the high Catholic population abstaining from eating meat on Fridays. The Hula Burger came to the rescue with its meat-free content, only people didn't roll with it. It was made from a thick slice of grilled pineapple served on a hamburger bun along with two slices of cheese and a burger sauce. Very simple ingredients that led to a very bad outcome. Come. Bad, bad, bad. <laughs> bad idea. During the culinary duel of 62, both sandwiches were pit against each other to see which one would get to stay on the menu. The verdict? Hula Burger 6, filet of fish 350. Needless to say, the Hula Burger was a total flop, and the chain had to say aloha and welcomed the filet of fish with open arms. Not the saddest goodbye in the fast food world, that's for sure. Good riddance. Domino's Oven Baked Sandwiches. Hello, Domino's. In 2008, Domino's strayed from the beaten path by introducing a line of oven baked sandwiches. And surprisingly enough, they are still on the menu to this day. You've got everything from chicken parm to Philly cheesesteak, all beloved by customers and proudly displayed on the menu. You said you're proud of it. Oh, I, I'm proud of its potential. The problem, however, doesn't come from the tastiness of the sandwiches, but more from their impressive nutritional pitfalls. Let's take the buffalo chicken sandwich, for instance. While it has been described as tasty and satisfying, it's probably not your safest bet if you're trying to watch what you eat. No, I'm on a special diet. Made with grilled chicken breast, a handful of onions, a blend of provolone and cheddar, and a creamy yet spicy mix of hot sauce and blue cheese, the buffalo chicken sandwich is a dietitian's worst nightmare. It has lots of fats, lots of salt, and no vegetables. Unless you count the few onions as such. Out of all of the oven-baked sandwiches, this is one of the worst in terms of calories and sodium, exceeding the recommended daily consumption. If you don't mind overindulging a bit, then by all means, get yourself a sandwich from Domino's. Just make sure you're aware of what you're actually eating. Aw, thank you. Just portion control and exercise. Jack in the Box Brunch Burger. We doing brunch? I'm always down for brunch. The majority of fast food restaurants offer a breakfast menu, and some of them have begun to serve it all day long, meaning brunch has never been easier to find. Jack in the Box is one of the places where you have this opportunity, and it tries to make the best of it with its brunch burger. Only the brunch burger is not something that should ever be consumed, no matter the time of the day. There's no time for that! It features a burger patty, a fried egg, hash brown, cheese, bacon, and mayo on a croissant. Literally all of the greasiest, most caloric ingredients possible. Back when it was first released, the brunch burger could be bought as part of a meal combo that included two tacos, halvesy fries, and a 20-ounce drink. Ah, oh, too many. Forget the fact that reviews haven't been all that great, calling the sandwich soggy, bland, and tasteless, or that it's just usually disappointing. The brunch burger just has one of the worst-looking nutritional charts ever. Some people might even call it a breakfast burger abomination. It has an impressive amount of calories, as well as your whole day's worth of saturated fat. One thing is for sure, if you decide to eat this greasy burger as a late-night craving, you'll Definitely regret it the next morning. Send my regrets. KFC Double Down. And I ordered a double double, but they gave me the double 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 double. Oh, KFC and its crazy inventions. The Double Down is a prime example of what happens when you decide not to play by the rules and push the limits. The Double Down was introduced on the American market in 2010 as a specific limited time offer. Only since KFC sold more than 10 million in the first months, it extended its stay a little longer. How would you like to extend your stay here? 
It's been on and off the menu over the years and even made its way back in 2021. This particularly greasy sandwich says no to traditional bread and instead uses two fillets of KFC original recipe fried chicken serving as the bun, which holds the bacon, a tangy barbecue sauce, and cheese. Many other versions of this sandwich are available at KFC locations around the world, like the Double Down King in South Korea, which includes a beef patty, or the Double down dog in the Philippines, a cheese-covered wiener wrapped in a fried chicken filet. Obviously, if the chain sold so many in the first month alone and it keeps coming back, it must be extra tasty or have an allure that people just can't resist. But that doesn't mean that it's any good for you. Sorry, I, I can't help myself. I'm terrible. Chick-fil-A Hash Brown Scramble Burrito Ooh, scrambled eggs, how delightful! Once again, fast food and breakfast going hand in hand. It's just such a nice thing to be able to get your breakfast fix even when you're on the go or pressed for time. With that being said, sometimes getting your first meal of the day at a fast food joint might not be the smartest thing to do, especially if it's at Chick-fil-A. I need you to stop at a Chick-fil-A. A what? The chain has a rather extensive breakfast menu, but the sandwich we're going to focus on is the Hash Brown Scrambled Burrito. Okay, a burrito is not your typical sandwich, but hey, it still works. And this breakfast burrito has more calories than any regular chicken sandwich on the menu, so that's reason enough to include it on this list. Wow, a lot of calories. This morning meal features sliced Chick-fil-A nuggets or sausage, hash browns, scrambled eggs, as well as a blend of Monterey Jack and cheddar cheeses wrapped in a flour tortilla and served with jalapeno salsa. First of all, this sandwich is gigantic and could easily be split and shared and still be enough to quell your hunger. Second of all, you would be much better off ordering the hash brown scramble bowl instead, as it has all of the same ingredients, minus the tortilla and the extra unnecessary calories. Also unnecessary. Wendy's Dave's Triple. Yeah, back in my day, you had to be a triple threat. Wendy's has a lot of great burgers, but the chain tends to go a little overboard on occasion, which in the long run can be a problem. We've got a big problem. This burger might just be the epitome of overdoing it. It's not just a regular fast food burger, it's one made with triple the beef, triple the fat, and triple the calories. The Dave's single is reasonable enough, but make it triple and you've got yourself one heck of a meal. Wendy's Dave Triple has featured on countless lists of unhealthiest fast food burgers, not because of its extravagant toppings, but because of the sheer quantity. On its toasted bun, this triple decker has three quarter pound beef patties, American cheese, lettuce, tomato, pickle, ketchup, mayo, and onion. While it may not seem so bad at first, when you look at the nutrition chart, it becomes clear why this particular burger is so problematic. Oh yeah, it, it was problematic. A thousand plus calories, close to 2,000 milligrams of sodium, and just over 70 grams of fat, for instance. That should be enough to make you second guess your Wendy's order. If not, just think of it this way. This one burger has more sodium than seven small orders of fries. There's no questioning its juiciness or its taste, just its health properties. Or should we say health hazards? That thing was a hazard. Hardee's Two Third Pound Monster Thick Burger. Oh, they're so thick and beautiful. This shouldn't come as too much of a surprise, but over the years, Hardee's has released a lot of questionable menu items. The two-third pound Monster Sick Burger, however, probably takes the cake. This giant, rightfully named burger features two one-third pound beef patties, three slices of American cheese, four strips of bacon, and a whole bunch of mayonnaise, all sandwiched between a bun. If you're looking for double your daily recommendation for saturated fat and more than your recommendation for sodium, then this is the perfect burger for you. It's a perfect burger. If, on the other hand, you were planning on eating more than just a burger for the whole day, you should probably steer clear of this one. Stay away. While reviews are generally great for the Monster Sick Burger, the one thing that keeps coming up is the lack of freshness. 
It's basically just a lot of meat, grease, and bread, without any vegetables to counterbalance the heaviness. Perhaps a little help from the garden would help alleviate the greasy burger, but it still wouldn't be enough to change its lack of health benefits to make a difference. In other words, next time you're pulling up to the drive-thru, consider going for a burger with a little less meat and a little more lettuce. How'd you eat the meat without the vegetables? Get a taste of more great videos. Just tap or click. And hey, leave us a comment, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell.